Last night, uh, last month, actually, we did a part on options to connect online in rural areas of Arizona. Uh, Arizona still has about one million households that have no internet access for various reasons, uh, financial, infrastructure, and otherwise. And I wanted to speak to the listening ear of those that are struggling to get to an internet connection in their home by going over some of the different ways that you can connect uh, over the uh, to the internet. So if you want to call in and describe the way that you connect to the internet, feel free to call us uh, during this segment, 520-790-2040. I have a list of seven ways plus two more ways to uh, access data. And um, I have this numbered in order of the fastest and the most reliable. So the number one way to connect to your inter- to connect to internet from your house is going to be through cable internet. And that's where um, companies such as Cox and Xfinity uh, use. Also large uh, uh, corporations use these whenever they have a large bank or a large building uh, or a uh, very large operation that utilizes many, many, Uh, different uh, computers and devices, they always opt for the cable internet because it is the fastest uh, that that is available right now. Uh, So cable internet is always the fastest. um, uh, And it's usually, uh, and as you'll notice, these uh, internet services, they're priced according to how well they know that they are doing in the marketplace. And cable companies, they know this. So they most likely will have the most expensive price but it's worth it in the long run because of the reliability and the speed that you get with cable internet. Uh, Coming in at number two or three, because uh, we can have uh, different discussions about this one, and that is DSL. Um, uh, That's that's internet through your phone line. So uh, the same copper that you were using, uh, uh, you know, in your home for decades, probably even before internet even came around, um, you can actually run internet through your through that same uh, through the through the same phone wires that uh, your phone was, but uh, what what they do is on a different uh, wavelength through that wire they can put in a modem so that the signal is split between your phone service and your internet service and it's all coming in through the same line on different wavelengths, so. That type of uh, internet service is considered DSL, and that is available through phone companies. Uh, and in Tucson, um, that's most likely going to be CenturyLink. Uh, the number three or two, and the reason why I'm <laughs> I'm not making any uh, differentiation between the two is because uh, we can uh, we can argue which one is actually better. But uh, number three on my list is satellite internet. Satellite internet. Uh, 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 can do 25 megabits uh, per second. I think uh, some have even advertised 50 megabits uh, speed. Um, So some of those companies include Hughes Internet and Viasat Internet. And those are the satellites. So basically the hookup there is, uh, well, the nice thing about it is it can be anywhere, anywhere where you can see the sky, basically. Uh, any, Any application where you can put a dish or some sort of receiver on the roof of your house and you can actually uh, connect to the internet that way uh, using this satellite. And it's communicating directly with uh, the satellite links, uh, it, you know, that uh, of the satellites that are up in the sky. So uh, as you can imagine, there's all kinds of interference that can, that can cause. But at best, when it's working at its best, you can get f- uh, 25 megabit speed, 30 megabit speed, uh, 50 megabit speed, which is plenty for... Um, several, uh, at least, uh, you know, half a dozen to a dozen uh, devices in your average household. Okay, so now there might be some argumenting, uh, <laughs> argumentative parts in that as far as, <laughs> uh, you know, if you were to talk to other computer people. But uh, even even a uh, high-definition streaming service would only be using uh, something to the effect of uh, maybe five megabits uh, per device. And if you have multiple devices... Each, if you can set the router in such a way that no device ever goes beyond uh, five megabits, because there's really no reason for it to, um, you can have pretty very very de- decent service uh, with uh, satellite internet. Um, the next uh, type would be number four, and that would be like a radio tower type uh, internet service, and that is with a service called Simply Bits. Um, now, Simply Bits. Uh, 
every time that I call them or uh, the few customers in the uh, Tucson area that I handle, uh, whenever they have Simply Bits, the internet connection seems to be, you know, is it, it's decent, um, but they can't seem to break beyond 1.5 megabit speed, which is not, which is, might be fine for a business, but probably not suitable for home. Believe it or not, the demand for in fast internet service is higher at home than it is at work in, in many cases. Because at work, you're only looking at email, you're only looking at text messages, you're sending off email in, in uh, text form. You're not really sending or receiving pictures, videos, you know, for the most part for businesses, unless you're in the creative uh, field for business. So there's more likely that people are gonna be streaming things, uh, videos and music at home than they would be at work. So uh, using Simply Bits might be fine, or like a tower internet, a radio tower type internet service, might be fine for the business environment, but uh, probably not for the home. Uh, the next type is number five, and that is phone tethering. So uh, we actually had a caller come in uh, uh, when we were discussing this last time about how they can use their cell phone for uh, internet for their house, and that is true. So. The cell phones today, especially the, uh, the, the 4G and the 5G, uh, depending on the make and model of your phone and the services that your provider is able to give to that phone, uh, you might be able to turn on a feature called Potspot, Personal Internet or Tethering Service. Uh, the, 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 all those names are pretty much all the same. And you can uh, turn this feature on and basically your phone becomes the, the Wi-Fi. Your phone becomes the Wi-Fi router and it can allow you to connect other devices to it and now those devices can be, become connected because of the internet connection of your cell phone. So uh, now as far as the speed and reliability of this types, you know, they're, they can be extremely, uh, they can be extremely unstable and uh, it's not suitable for streaming. So if you're trying to do anything with Zoom or you're trying to do Netflix or if or if you're trying to do anything with video this would not be a suitable uh, connection because it's very very shoddy at best you may get very very shoddy performance very choppy video performance and uh, the other the other problem with this service is it can be very very expensive so when you're using the tethering service you're actually using up <coughs> the mobile data that your uh, uh, that your uh, phone provider is giving you for your plan. Okay, so if they give you like 10 gigs of, of data, you can eat up all that data in a couple of days very, very easily. And then they're going to start charging you extras for the, for, for the extra downloads. And then by at the end of the month, you'll have a huge bill and you get all upset. And you call them, no, 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 this is what you've used, you know. So be very, very wary with that. It's a good enough in internet to get you by. It's a good backup, but I would not consider that to be a permanent or your usual internet. Number seven, I'm sorry, we're up to number six, and that is to use the mobile data on your phone. That is to, not to make your phone the tethering to make it a Wi-Fi, but to actually just use the internet on the phone itself. And um, that, uh, that doesn't, that tends to not uh, push the boundaries of the data usage as much. But if you're tethering, the data usage will definitely go way up. Number seven is to use old style dial up. And that's when you actually use your old uh, landline phone line where it actually makes a phone call. <laughs> and uh, you know, there, there are some countries that still use that. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are some people right here in uh, Arizona that are still uh, using dial up. But uh, it's met probably only good enough for receiving and sending emails. Barely uh, any websites would, would load any <laughs> at any speed uh, using dial-up. So dial-up is like uh, of the very, very lowest. Now, if you actually have no computer, but you still need data, you can always call somebody that has internet access or just dial the old 411. Do you remember 411? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a really, really old system. But those are the different ways uh, that uh, you can connect to the internet uh, even if you uh, are struggling to find a way. Up next.